Welcome back, and so when we last left off, Jeff was in the process of beginning the layup on this uh, spa for the foreplane, and this is the second stage, and actually he's had to do multiple stages because of the heat in the shop, and we're actually considering turning our oven into a cool room for when he goes to lay up the wing spars. And meanwhile, here's uh, Zach and Keith, and they're doing a layup on the back section of the keel in order to prep um, so we can bond in the lower section there of the aft pressure bulkhead. And not long after that, we got that bulkhead uh, bonded in. You see, we put a, a two by four or a couple and a two by four and a bit of steel there, uh, actually to just keep it pressed up against the other bulkhead. So that one's bonded in now, and all that's left uh, in the fuselage now is to just do the radius blocking uh, on the ends there, and we'll be ready to do the post cure. The and here's Jeff doing uh, yet another stage of this particular layout. Um, because you know the, the caps on this thing have multiple layers of uh, carbon fiber and you can only do so many at a time because um, the heat in the shop is causing the resin to gel too quickly so as I was saying earlier we're thinking about just buying um, a little wall mount, wall mount or window mount uh, air conditioning unit and using that in conjunction with our oven for when we go to do the uh, window uh, wing spa layups and the final thing to be bonded in there to the inside of the fuselage is just these little side braces that go between the aft pressure bulkhead there and the door frames, uh, one on either side. So here's Keith uh, with some high sole. This is the original high sole we purchased. It sort of has more of a clear color and he's just uh, buttering up that one. And so there's a left one and a right one. And this is what it looks like after they've been bonded in. So there's the one on the left hand side of the aircraft there in the middle of the frame. Sorry about it. it's a bit dark in there because I had the door shut in there or one of them shut and there's the one on the other side with a uh, handful of Clecos just holding it into place and that just adds some extra rigidity to the whole inside of the fuselage there. And the next thing for the guys was to cut out the core for the ribs for the four plane and elevator so some of those uh, cores are FR4 and so this is one eighth of an inch FR4 that Keith is just cutting out some pieces from that have been traced with templates and uh, there's some other bits there that are just out of this um, the foam that we have that's the blue one there that's a um, quarter inch thick so there's a whole bunch of those that need to be done obviously because we have 24 um, well actually it was 24 molds but there's more than that because uh, some of the molds uh, make multiple parts so I think there's about 30 or so ribs that are going to be made up all together for that and as you can see there's the guy sort of working through uh, just fitting all of those little bits of foam and FR4 into the various molds so uh, I don't think any of those will get laid up uh, next week because the shop's pretty much going to be shut over Oshkosh because Jeff's not going to be there and I'm not going to be there the guys can do limited things um, so and laying up a bunch of ribs is not one of them so anyway um, those guys are getting those done and back on the doors here you can see you've got the right hand door on and the gas strut connected and um, because of the geometry there we needed a, a 350 pound gas strut just to hold that up and it looks like we're going to have to step it up to a 400 pound one even though the door I think weighs about 45 pounds. Um, just the geometry means that you have to have a much stronger gas strut so that's something that we have to uh, purchase and step up. And uh, on the inside I wanted to show you here that's the handle that we've got on the inside for locking it and unlocking it and it basically just actuates the whole thing. I don't know why I was having trouble there pushing it. It's just, it's got to over center and it really clicks in um, to place sort of very nicely, you know, with a, a lot of authority when it locks in. So that's locked in right there, as you can see, and then unlocked. And uh, right now I just have the hooks um, connected and not the pins. And over to the gear system and I've left the sound up so you can hear it actually operating and there's a lot of background noise in the shop as well. But anyway, yeah, it's uh, working there fine, but it's, probably pushing uh, the gear pumps probably be pushing uh, too much fluid a little too quickly and then you can hear it kind of banging as it comes in so we may need to put some sort of rubber stoppers on the end so it doesn't bang but I've also ordered uh, some flow control valves so we can just slow it down a little bit um, in terms of it you know how much fluid it's moving through the pump um, and how quickly so that that way we can sort of dial it in and uh, get it to work exactly as we need it to um, but you know it doesn't have any problem pulling up the gear that's for sure and it uh, you know locks and holds nicely into place and with respect to it going down right now it just goes down way too fast when I run the motor to, to put it down so we definitely need the flow control valve on that to slow it down 
and so uh, for this demonstration all we're doing is opening the dump valve which you'll see when Jim does that it just lets a little bit of pressure out and then all we have to do is just touch the power on the uh, pump there and it'll just release it and let everything come down as you'll see here in a second So as you can see, it comes down fairly quickly, and that's because it has the gas struts uh, pushing it into place or pushing them down uh, in case you know the gear system was to fail. Um, but anyway, we'll get that all resolved once we have the flow control valve, um, and we'll be able to just use the motor to gently put it down. Anyway, that's our update for this week. Uh, I'm up at Oshkosh, so I'm not sure if I'll have an update uh, during the week. Uh, if I do, look out for that. Otherwise, it'll be the following week. So thanks again for watching.